party a bird of prey took to K trying to click Christmas day I like to party alone yay 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 welcome to art explained the show where I explain art my name is Michelle and this week we're talking about how sound can be art as we all know music is not art and it will never be art All jokes aside, at what point can sound become something of value to museums or galleries? John Cage is an American experimental composer from the 20th century who made a piece called 4 minutes 33 seconds or 433. If you saw this piece in person without any context whatsoever, you'd probably be a little confused. Maybe even angry. Maybe even with context, you'd still be angry. Let's break down the performance. In this video, William Marks performs the piece. He sits down, he puts on his glasses, and then he closes the piano's fall board, then starting a stopwatch. Nothing seems to happen. He plays no notes, the room is quiet, and then he turns on the stopwatch once again, opens the fall board, and sits there without moving very much. When the second and third movements begin, this series of events occur once more. The whole piece in the end is 4 minutes and 33 seconds of total silence. Cage's song was the direct result of him encountering Robert Rauschenberg's white paintings, which were simply white, with nothing else to differentiate themselves from one another. They were empty, but they had their own presence, their own statement. Cage was also influenced by Muzak, which was canned generic background music that was piped into offices, retailers, and train stations. With music nearly everywhere, Cage felt like silence was going extinct. I said he felt like silence was going extinct. I just want to take a second. No music, No sound, just empty space for reflection. Because of this, the purpose of 433 was for the audience to listen to the sounds around them during the performance as if they were music. The performer then was not the musician, but the audience itself. Cage's music, while controversial, blew up the scene in New York when it was first performed by pianist David Tudor in August 1952. Still, it's revered to this day and performed even by entire orchestras. <laughs> Another piece that is lesser known but still worth knowing is the 40 part motet by Jeanette Cardiff. This art installation was created in 2001 with 40 speakers each one with a different, unique voice from the Salisbury Cathedral Choir. Every speaker has a different voice, singing Spemin Allium, a Latin fragment which means In No Other Is My Hope, which was composed by Thomas Tallis in 1556. This art installation allows visitors to walk in front of, behind, and around the speakers, which causes the sound to change with some voices drowning out and others becoming stronger. In an interview with Foundation Louis Vuitton, Cardiff described her work as cubist audio, with each source divided and collaged together. Cardiff's installation doesn't end when the singing is over, as visitors can listen to the performers gossip amongst themselves. The entire work lasts approximately 17 minutes, with 14 minutes being the singing. The 40-part motet has been exhibited in MoMA, MoMA PS1, and SF MoMA. There are many, many interesting sound artists out there, and maybe we'll touch on them in a future episode. In the end, what makes a good sound artist is their ability to make others rethink sound and music. So what exactly makes this different than any other kind of experimental music out there? First off, this whole thing is subjective, which is one of the most important things to remember when talking about any art form. What makes great art is in the eye of the beholder, obviously. But if we try to make a distinction, there is usually some kind of extra performative or visual element to sound art that most music doesn't have. With William Marks, he's performing this John Cage piece to maximize its impact, which it may not have if you listen to it on Spotify or your record player, Bucking Hipster. Cardiff's installation is more than just musical. The speakers are arranged in a unique way that allows the sound to change depending on where you are. The gossiping also allows each speaker to have their own personality. We hope this piqued your interest on sound artists. Be sure to subscribe and press the little bell thingy. Maybe do a nice art explain screening at your local old folks home. Feel free to leave a comment on this video with your favorite sound artist or musician. Expect the next art explain video on Thursday.